Why do you like your music? I think because it's a way for me to capture these moments throughout my life where I feel a certain way or I'm thinking about the world a certain way and I have like a need to express that but I don't know how any other way. For example, a song like Drive. For that one, it, it sounds like silly and fun and like upbeat, which it is, but underneath it, like I was going through a period of just feeling super lost and directionless in life, which was like, I'd never really felt that before. I'd always had a pretty clear path of what I wanted to do. So it was the first time I could question that and I didn't really know how to deal with it. So drive was my way of telling myself it's okay to feel this way and it'll pass.
Who and what are the biggest influences on your sound? My music is really an extension of myself, so while it sounds conceited, I'd say I'm my biggest influence. <laughs> like Drive was just inspired by whatever I was going through at the time with how disillusioned I was about my work and where my life was at and feeling like I existed inside this space that I had no control over and that sort of helplessness translated itself into me using loops to build the song as a way to feel like I had more control over my work in order to counter how out of control my life felt at the time.
Charlie. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, okay. Okay. I'm kind of accepting it. Yeah. <laughs> cool guy. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> What's up guys? It's Maddie Boyd from Your Angel. What do you like about your music? Um, what I like about my music is it's nice to like have a time capsule of periods of time in my life. Um, and also to be like able to engage with emotions that are like maybe like ugly or like emotions because I'm a very like prideful person and like have a tendency to shove shit down so I'm like easily embarrassed or like shameful about like feeling jealous or like hurt by people or whatever like that's like sometimes I associate that with shame which is like so unhealthy I'm working on that baby um, but it's nice to be able to like engage with those emotions and um, while not like enabling myself to like be toxic or like project that kind of shit onto other people. Um, yeah, overall it just helps me navigate my brain and I'm very thankful for that. And she sounds good. We, I like the way it sounds. Um, tell us about your dream writer. Honestly, I don't, I have a hard time consuming things before I play because I get nervous and if I like eat right before I play I feel nauseous and I've like projectile vomited before but you know we love a LaCroix bitchin dip from it's like this dip made out of almonds and shit and it's really spicy with blue tortilla chips fire um that's about it and then like you know alcohol for all your friends that come drink all of it while you're playing. Um, Who and what are the biggest influences on your sound? Oh. Um, God, that's always such a complex question for me because I feel like I don't know, like the way I perceive my music is so different than how other people perceive it, so I like feel like I don't even know what it actually sounds like, but... You know, I love, like, Dolly Parton and Willie Nelson and, like, Marty Robbins. I think he has, like, the best voice ever. And, um, like, The Carpenters and The Sundays. And then we love, like, The Beach House. Like, if I could make, like, a future sex love sounds, like, which I never will be able to make something that sick. But, I, you know, I, like, am constantly trying to, like, make that record in my own way um yeah I don't know Prince my mom you know my mom um was like very into like Prince Michael Jackson like that whole vibe and then my dad like strictly country I like grew up on a farm half the time um so merging of those worlds but my mom was always so fucking with it like she'd always make like mix CDs on the way to school and I was like poured his head in no doubt like she was always fucking with it she always showed me really cool music so I think I have a pretty broad like range of shit that influences me but I don't know like what my music actually like sounds like in terms of that what do you most miss about playing shows and what do you miss the least I would say what I miss most is probably like same as everyone. Just like, you know, it's a very like cathartic experience to get to connect with people that way. Um, and it's like experiencing your own music in a new way, which is really special. But I miss least it's fucking loading gear. Fuck that shit. And I made my band setup so complicated because uh, we wanted her to sound good, but it, there's just so much going on, um, and it's such a bitch to set up on stage. But, you know, like, in the context of what's happening in the world, it's like we'd bitch about that playing shows then, but now it's like I would do that 
and just that at this point just to like be in public so you know to put it in perspective but still not a huge fan what new skill have you acquired this year <laughs> um like none I'm still a dumb bitch i like started cooking more purely for financial reasons during this <laughs> pandemic oh my god charlie relax um and yeah i'd say that's about it i haven't really acquired any new skills i don't think um got really good at like online sale shopping which skills do you think you've developed upon i think production i'm always like that's kind of like a always thing i feel like every year i get a lot better out of that and that'll like probably never stop um but there was like a lot of time obviously to fuck around but a honestly for the beginning of quarantine like i had such a giant creative block and i think it's because i psyched myself into it because it's like i felt so much pressure like to be making shit it's like okay bitch like you got the time now like if you're not like using this time to be creative and like make something really meaningful then like you're wasting this moment um but i couldn't and i literally just got drunk with my mom every single day but then once you know once like a few months passed i started like getting back in the groove of things once it like once this experience stopped feeling like an excuse to just like take a break and watch TV. It was like, oh shit, like this is gonna be our life for a little bit. Like you just gotta start functioning somewhat normally again in terms of like create, like trying to create routine for myself and like whatever, have some sort of structure so I like don't get depressed. Um, so you know, I extremely ended it. It's been, um, you know, a process and um, High highs and low lows, baby. I'm sure it's been like that for everybody. Did I make a quarantine album? Yes, she did. I'm really excited about it. I feel like it's like really big growth from the last. Like I feel like it's so much better than the last one. And we love her. She's cute. Pipe Dream's cute. But this one I'm like extremely proud of. Um, and I got to make it with like two of my best friends, and I'm just very, very excited about it. Um, it like feels like I finally like made, like I really loved Pipe Dream, and it was like perfect for that period of time. But I feel like I made like actually what I like want. Um, I like achieved what I wanted to finally. Um, so that's exciting, and that's all I really got to say about that. But. This is weird, I'm really bad at talking to a camera by myself. I feel like Tana Mojo. Thank you, Cryo Geisler, for having me. This has been really nice to have something to put my energy into, and I appreciate you working to make this happen. And I love you, and I love everyone, and I hope to see you in real life shortly. Goodbye. Yeah.